start. Right. It's just live now. Cool. Kia ora koutou. Welcome to um, the Cromwell Community Board meeting. Seems like a very long time since I have been at a community board meeting with being unwell for the last meeting. Um, welcome to anybody who's joined us today who's viewing our meeting and welcome um, to all our community board members and staff. It's lovely to um, be back together meeting and working together for our community. Um, it's a sign of the times that we are again um, on um, an online meeting and not face to face, um, which does make it much more challenging for all of us in this space to run the meeting. So please bear with me. Um, first thing I need to do is, of course, to um, open this meeting. And then the next thing is for us to um, go through our apologies. So. Um, I have an apology today from um, Tony Buchanan, who is unable to join us um, for this meeting. So um, I need a mover and a seconder for the apologies, please. I, will. I think that was Cheryl and Nigel. <laughs> um, all in favour? Thank you. Um, Sorry, our next um, item that we have, we don't have a public forum speaker today. Am I right? That hasn't been updated? Uh, no, there's no public forum speakers. Cool. So we move on to the confirmation of the minutes of our meeting that was held on the 23rd of November. Um, do I have a mover and a seconder for those, please? Happy to move that up. Sorry, who was that? Bernard. Bernard, thank you. And a seconder? Second, Nigel. Nigel, thank you. All in favour? Aye. 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 Um, then on to the declarations of interest. And it's just to remind um, members of their need to be vigilant and um, and to stand aside from any decision making when a conflict arises between their role as a member and any private um, or other external interests that they may have. And I know that our members are all um, well aware of their responsibilities there um, and will do that um, diligently. Um, and that moves us on to the first of our reports. Um, and we have Marie joining us for um, item 21.1.2 on page 17 of your agendas to talk about the Cromwell C um, Cemetery development plan. So welcome, Marie. Thank you. Kia ora koutou. Um, the Cromwell Cemetery development plan uh, report item has three parts to the uh, decision we are asking you to make today. I am going to start with uh, taking the report as read and really focusing on those three parts of the resolution. So the three parts are to look at the designation and classification of the land that's been set aside for the expansion of, of the Cromwell Cemetery, to approve the 2021 Cromwell Cemetery development plan, and to agree that funding should be set aside in future long-term plans for the implementation of that plan. I'm just going to share a couple, we'll use a couple of the pages from the agenda as we work through this, uh, starting with page 18, if we can do that. Sorry, I'm just going to move that up. So there, page 18. So focusing on the designation and classification component, we're recommending that the processes to designate and classify the land around the operational cemetery commence to cement the land's future land holding for cemetery purposes. And that's particularly the lands highlighted on this page in white. This for just doing that process or proceeding with those processes and pleading them would align with the cemetery strategy and also the Burial and Cremation Act. And on the basis of the review process that we've gone through would warrant the process going through the process is warranted on the basis of short term demand for space 
to be available in that cemetery. In terms of the review plan, I'm just going to move us down to page 25. We're into the plan itself. So in the main, the plan that precedes this, the 2001 Cromwell Cemetery Development Plan, has been implemented. The remaining burial capacity on the site is 108 plots, which gives us about five years of service. And the space that's left available, I'm just indicating on the screen now, is the bare space here. Once that's full, the, effectively the operational cemetery as it currently stands is full. The review has considered burial requirements for the next 100 years. If I move, move you down to page 29. The 100 year period and the forecasting associated has been based on population growth, burial trends that we, we know about now, and demographics. Based on those three things, the expansion of the operating cemetery into those spaces I highlighted previously in white uh, is, is now considered necessary. It will require a, about 3.8 hectares of the 5 hectare land lot that's available to cemetery expansion. It, the work or the expansion can be staged. We know that the land lot as it stands is, is large enough to accommodate changing cultural requirements. And any events that trigger an increase increase in burial rate. So what we what we haven't done is extrapolate that that data on burial rates to accommodate what ifs and maybes. We've relied on trends as they currently stand, aligning that with population growth and saying that's the space we need. What I'm saying to you is we know that there's adequate land there to accommodate, for example, a natural disaster that might uh, increase the burial rate. And if I just pause on this, this as, um, graphic at, at the moment, the expansion of the operating symmetry shows you how, how the different burial types can be accommodated, primarily um, burial pot plots as well as ashes. It shows you how moving around the space can be accommodated, so vehicular or pedestrian access and um, wayfinding through the site. It also allows for tree planting and some beautification to secure the site from the neighbouring activities as they will in time change. In terms of implementing this plan, moving on to the next page, page 30, we're proposing to you that the work can actually be staged and to do that requires another level of design uh, and certainly some costing work and we believe that that should be factored into future long-term plans and that's what we're asking you to consider doing through the third part of the resolution today. If I just move back to page 29, um, I will just comment on the, the fact that we've accommodated crematoria activities in, in this plan. It's really an indication that the site can contain that type of facility uh, in, in that land holding rather than indicating a wide. Um, the service uh, as a council. So um, I'm pretty certain that will be a question from one of you, uh, but that's why, why we're showing it there, that alongside the fact that the crematorium and Alexandra services um, geographically beyond the boundaries of, of central Otago and therefore factoring in growth in places like Wanaka, Queens, uh, Queenstown, etc. cetera, um, that's another reason why we've looked at whether or not the site can accommodate it and shown that it can be accommodated on that site. I'm open to questions on this proposal. Um, Madam Chair, can I ask you a question? Tim here. Sorry, I'm just, just taking me a moment to navigate my um, camera on and, and mic on, but yes, you may ask a question. Go ahead. Thank you. Marie, I was just um, conscious that the LTP, we had a number of um, submissions about the crematorium, obviously um, from people closely interested in it. 
but they were making claims then that the Alexandra crematoria was running to capacity now. And I'm just reading the cost to complete a business case could be included in the latter years of the 2024 long term plan. So how does that, you know, way out into the 2030s line up with what we were being told at the LTP? Have we had updated data on that, please? Uh, no, that has, well, this situation that you just out line is a dis disconnect between me the report writer for this report and, and you bearing witness to that coin from a submitter so i apologize if there's a, a disconnect there but that is entirely how it's come about um, how to remedy that um there's some work to do clearly starting with working with the operators of the area to um check on that detail and then work out a plan moving it's more about the timing rather than the plan, which looks fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, any further questions? Neil? Yeah. Um, a couple of things I take it from the recommendation is that while the, the concept plan shows that um, lot 12, for the want of a better word, is potentially identified as being surface at this stage, there seems to be no intention in the recommendation not to make that part of the, um, the cemetery reserve at this stage. So we're not, this this report, the resolution is not suggesting that lot 12, if we call it that, be disposed of. Oh, what we're good. indicating is that 100 years takes us uh, that close to that lot 12, and then who knows what happens beyond that. Cool. Um, so next question, um, with the proposed crematorium, where's the access to that? I can't quite see the plan well enough. Is it, do you go down the middle one through one, eight, left and three, and then up the tree line on the west, or? How do you get there? Yeah, so just to the right of that graphic with the green on it is the vehicular circulation plan. So yep. there's a little bit of wayfinding. Um, oh, yeah, I can it, see it. Yep, found yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the um, if we designate it and then also give it um, reserves act status. I take it because it's derived from freehold land that the revocation of that reserve in the future, if we do some jiggery pokey or, or want to get rid of that surplus land, that it's a simple process under the Reserves Act to uplift the designation and the reserve status? Um, yeah, the, the process is clearly articulated in the Act and it's one of time and opinion. So I wouldn't never say that it's an easy process, but no. there are hard processes in this world to go through. But the fact that it's not a crown derived reserve makes it a lot simpler and more straightforward correct. than it was. That's correct. Yeah, cool. Um, and I think my last thing is question is, and the, the plan wouldn't have known this, but um, down the eastern boundary and indeed the western boundary, the cemetery, particularly the eastern though, well, both sides is going to be industrial land. And I think it would be good if this concept plan made mention of the fact that there's a real need to make sure that the that industrial land use doesn't encroach um, there's rules in the industrial zone about how far you can be away, but I think it's really important we probably look at whether those rules are appropriate for industrial land next to a cemetery, which when we did our industrial rules, we didn't have. Because it, I'd hate to see the day that, that someone um, decides on the delegated authority to say, yes, you can build on the boundary of the cemetery and put a seven metre high concrete um, tilt slab wall there when you've got a, um, a cemetery plot five metres away. So. I'd like to think the plan should actually cover that off and make some clear recommendations about what is the, the appropriate distance to be away from um, for buildings in, in the industrial area to be away from the um, um, the, um, the, the, the cemetery. I think I'd need to defer to Louise to respond to that because this document is in a statutory document and yeah. the process you're referring to is. So um, if I could ask Louise if there's any comments she'd like to make in respect to that. And but um, before yeah. she does, I think the key thing is that the, I agree it's not a statutory document, but it could make re recommendations for some submission to the statutory document. Yeah, and the way, yes, please comment. Um, thank you. I think what you're suggesting, Neil, is a plan change to the industrial rules. And as you know, we are currently going through that plan change and have probably missed the mark at which we can do that. Um, I think, though, that this, so the yard is five metres. In an industrial zone, you can build five metres from the boundary when it's an adjacent to a, a different zone. And I think the underlying one of this might be rural, is it? Um, 
So I think this five metre yard um, and the plan accommodates buffer planting to address, so the plan you're seeing in this report, to address that um, mitigation of any effects of industrial activity on the cemetery. Yeah, I guess I just to me it just seems an opportunity to get the experts who've done the concept development plan to give their thoughts about what an appropriate distance is, and if but nothing else, then make sure we if we can't change the industrial side of things, then at least we don't put plots up on our land. So yeah, you, know, you can do it either way. Yes, um, I'm sure we can do that. Yeah, I just think it's, I think it's important because you know the situation that arose recently where you know the good thing is it looks like you can only build one and a half times the um, uh, the distance away anyway to a height of seven meters or something the way it works so it shouldn't be an issue but just hate to think that but one that scares me is that someone in and in, and in, in, without realizing it says yeah you can it's industrial land you can build on the boundary and give a um you know discretionary resource consent um tick and then all of a sudden the first we all know about it is when there's a big wall there and that would not be good yep fair points neil we'll have a we'll have a look at that cool. that's neil, all the I, questions I, madam chair thank you Thank Can I you. just pick up on your question? Um, I just got a question that fell out of that question. Um, yes. That strip to the west there, um, that's in the process of being sold or has already been sold? Louise, do you know? Um, that is, there is an agreement for sale and purchase, and I think that is subject to the land being rezoned industrial, which is part way through the process. Right, because I was just sort of wondering if, you know, Neil, I probably share Neil's concern. Uh, it may be that a covenant or some kind of agreement goes over a part of the land that sits outside the statutory plan change process that we could use to ask, ask, tell um, people to be mindful of the cemetery. OK, um, I think we're past the point of no return because there is an agreement in place, but I know when we had discussions with the owner, he was mindful of things like the entrance way of Cromwell, and I'm sure he'd be respectful of the cemetery as well. So we can have those discussions and see if we can put something um, in place anyway outside the formal process. Yeah, if, we do, if we do that both sides, that's a good idea. And I think you're right, the one on the west is certainly probably the sort of person that will be mindful of those sort of things. And we do control the rest of those sections at this stage to, on the eastern side, apart from the ones that are already sold. So we should be able to do something with Correct. them ourselves as well. Yeah. And if, if, this, if this concept plan then informs that, You've got something that actually backs it up, not just the number that Neil's picked up out of the sky. Yeah. Um, further questions from elected members? Uh, no. I just have a question. Um, yeah, go, Verna. So on that plan, was it on page 29? It looked like area six, which is the burial plot area. Yes. I guess my question is just around we've got some you know requirements under the burials act that we need to do and that's to provide for burials am i right in assuming that area six is the only area that we require for that so six is repeated a number of times in yeah the, twice right yeah so we've got no, six where we've got five. vacancy out to the east we've got six towards the front and then six towards the back and when we stage them if there was if this was rolled out in the way that we proposed in staging we would provide for additional uh, ash and um, interment burials uh, in each of those stages but you'd have sixes in here sixes in here if i refer to that and then sixes in here so we would we would cater for demand for all types of burials as we go through the years yeah and that, and that demand would sort of be for the next hundred years basically correct and if that was sped up, just for argument's sake, uh, like for instance, the situation we're in now, and we had demand for hundreds of burials, clearly there would require some thinking about how to actually cope with that. But also this site has capacity to deal with more than 100 years worth of burials based on current trends. So we've still got, what I'm saying is we've still got this space up here, that if burials went from being uh, what is it, 13 per annum to 30 per annum, then we have a little bit of flexibility. And in the fact that it gets designated and classified, we can still deliver cemetery services with the entire site. Yeah. Um, I guess my sort of comment, firstly, I think that that plan's looking quite good, to be fair. Um, 
and it's nice to have you know uh, progression from the 2000 oh, when did it start 2001 um so i guess the another one of my questions kind of stems from what tim was asking and neil was sort of getting to for this plan to be implemented the way that the recommendations are at the moment is tied into all of that land becoming reserve land and i guess my question is if the crematorium which tim's right there was a fair bit of interest in the crematorium and i, I recall from our discussions through that long-term plan process that there was a feeling that council was probably not likely at least not in the short term to get into providing cemeteries uh sorry crematoriums but that if a business wanted to do that they would likely do that um so i guess my question then and there is a question there somewhere is that land that's shown as crematorium land if that were to be developed in accordance with this um, cemetery development plan, would it not be better to be freehold title so that a business could take that over or we could build it and lease it to a business with unhooking ourselves from a long term plan process um, and also not encumbering the land of potentially a private business um, to have to try and deal with the Reserve Management Act? I'm probably better qualified to speak on the Reserves Act relationship with a commercial property than I am with the district plan, in which case I defer that to Louise, if you don't mind, Louise. Um, in terms of the Reserves Act, commercial activities on um, reserves classified land is appropriate as long as it aligns with the purpose of the land. And it uses words like public enjoyment, and clearly that seems an odd term to reference in, in regard to a cemetery. But um, I don't see that being a limitation. Um, it, it's, it would require a little bit more work to pursue your idea and classify the balance of the land and, and retain a, a space in it as freehold. Effectively, I think that would need to be a subdivision process. Um, but once again, it's not impossible. It just takes some time and, and money. And I think we're on a quite a a short period of time to deliver space. Admittedly, we're saying that could be provided at the front of this current cemetery to make the, the demand from, say, year five to ten. Um, but I think, yeah, we'd need to do a little bit more thinking around that. And if I could just ask Louise to make any comment on the designation implications. Um, yeah, I think that um, the fact that it would be a reserve and designated under the district plan both um, point to the use of the crematorium and actually enable it. So both of those um, mechanisms enable that activity to happen. And provided the board are happy with a commercial lease over it, then there is no issue. If the board at a later date decided rather than have a commercial lease and that they'd actually want to sell the land, as Murray's pointed out, there is a process under the Reserves Act that enables you to um, reverse that and removal of the designation, as you'll know, Verna, is actually a bit easier than that. So it can be undone. Um, what it does now in its current form is it protects the land for that going into the future. Um, and it certainly does enable a commercial lease to have a crematorium there. Thank you. Um, Gordon um, would like to comment as well. So Gordon, over to you. Yes, thanks. I was just, I was just going to, yeah, Louise has sort of said what I was going to say, but uh, it's a, going to be a local purpose cemetery reserve. So we can do a management plan for that if we wish under the Reserves Act, which would certainly submit in the future of any such things as a um, crematorium within that. And it is consistent with the purpose of the land's uh, classification. So it would be a consistent activity. It's not inconsistent with what is envisaged as well. Thank you. Um, and then, sorry, the next question kind of does follow. It's all kind of linked, unfortunately. There's quite a lot to unpack. Um, Marie, I would have thought we have to do a subdivision anyway. I suppose the way that the recommendation is written at the moment, it's recommending that we change the status of the whole of the lot that currently exists. And my understanding is that we have entered into an agreement to sell part of the land to the west. and on that plan that I'm looking at on screen now, there's a little triangle to the northeast that's also taken out of it, which is currently part of that land. So I guess it's more of a comment than a question. If we're undergoing a subdivision already, wouldn't it make sense to subdivide 
those pieces that we don't need. Do a boundary adjustment with the current cemetery land to include all those areas that are area six because they relate to the burials act and our requirement to provide for burials that would leave the surplus land lot 12 or oh, uh, area 12 plus a future crematorium to be developed under private you know freehold status by and i'm sort of sorry to drop you in a gordy but it might be someone like the parks department and our um, uh, property team um, and I guess for me what that does I understand that we can roll back all of these processes but every time we're sort of putting forward and rolling back right now we've got freehold land there we have to do a subdivision anyway let's protect the land that we require for burial and let's develop the balance of the land because I guess the benefit here is is that where the, com the, the, the community board slash council it's important for us to develop this land in accordance with what the community wants and this you know by us adopting this plan puts a signal out there that you know the council's staff can go out there and maybe take that crematorium to the next stage as a separate packet of work i'm not sort of saying that we need more packets of work because we've got a memorial hall and a, and a mall to get onto but it just seems to me that it's quite easy to do a boundary adjustment around the cemetery put all the burial land into a reserve because we know that that's where it's going to go the area where development could happen in many different ways and we'll think about that in the future at some point um, could happen at that time in a different lot but all in accordance because I think one of our recommendations is to develop this land in accordance with this plan that's on the screen now and it's uh, Gordy here so I think the thrust of this report is to protect that whole that outlined in red for the next hundred plus years for burials yes. that's what we're trying to achieve with the designation and classification if you're carving off pieces piecemeal for something that may or may not happen in the future, um, I think that's that could be problematic. The crematorium, yes, could go there. Somebody might want to put it in another piece of land as well, because clearly I, I'm pretty sure I don't think council would be wanting to operate a crematorium. Most councils that do that, they've got old ones and are trying to get out of them. They're a commercial business, so we would just provide some land within this um, red space at some point when the time is right for a crematorium if the business community thought that was an appropriate investment for them to do. I'm probably actually saying exactly what you're saying, Gordon. If we left that land in a freehold title to be developed in accordance with the community board's plan that will be approved today, possibly, then that does lock in that land um, for it, future. Because we're not selling it to a developer. We are the board that will develop in accordance with this. Because an, an issue I've got is that there's a tension here between the land required for burials, what we're legislatively required to provide, and the community requiring business land to develop on in the short to sort of medium term. The plan that's in front of me now shows about 2.6 hectares that's required for 100 years of burials. Lot, that area 12 shown on there, that's, that this report says that, that is surplus to the requirement. So looking to shore up that area 12, then this report really should be updated to say that we're looking at 200 years worth of cemetery development. And I guess what I'm just trying to get to the bottom of is what is the tension and the relationship and how can we ensure flexibility for the board with the board's land into the future um, without locking 200 years worth of land into a reserve management plan and look, we all understand how difficult it is with time and money and long term plans, how difficult it is to update and manage a reserve management plan. Um, so there's a potential that this land sits there for 200 years and there's a there, there's a burden on the ratepayers to maintain that land that's doing nothing when that land could be held by the board and could be developed in accordance with cemetery burial purposes without the need to go ahead right now and change the status of the whole lot. I think I need to clarify that that's not another 200, another, another 100 years of burials in lot 12 based on the estimate of population growth and stuff at the time. So in uh, what, 100 years time, um, I think we worked out there's probably about another 15, 20 years. So you might be with 120 years here um, all up if burials go at the sort of rate we're expecting them to do. But if they go up faster, as Mari's indicated, then we're we looking for land somewhere else. And I think it would be short-sighted of the board to 
perhaps look at that as uh, that leaving that uh, as unclassified for perhaps a future board to carve off if it wanted to, and then you'll be looking at another site somewhere else purchased within Cromwell for burials in 100 years' time. Somebody will be. So I think it's, it's really hard to get around the long-term planning for cemeteries, but I, I think the longer we can leave them in one site, the better that is for families and um, you know connectivity in those areas for um, you know, um, uh, what is it called? Ge genealogical stuff, yeah. Yeah, and maybe my question is around the areas then, because my calculations show that the current plan in the burial area show 100 years worth of, and it's on the screen there, 2,132. They'll be buried in 2.6 hectares. The balance of that site is almost three. So from that, I have to assume that if it's 2.6 to bury people for 100 years, then three is 100 plus. I think this kind and of thing well is, is perfectly square rather than oddly shaped. So I would imagine you could fit more plots in there. Yes, okay, Louise, Louise has just added a couple of comments there just for people who are um, present at the meeting but not um, part of it, that any crematorium would be subject to board approval as one thing. So however the land's designated, however it's subdivided, that that would still have to come back to the board for, for um, approval. And her other comment there is that there's about 50 hectares of land currently being rezoned for industrial purposes. Um, did you want to add any clarification to that, Louise, or is that clear for oh, everybody? Um, no, just to say, Anna, that um, there seemed to, seemed to be a concern that council staff might go off and do something if this, if this is designated as reserve. All it does, as Gordy and Mary have both pointed out, is protect the land for the future. Anything that happens on the site will be subject to board approval, like a crematorium. Obviously, burials continue, but um, it also enables the budgeting to develop the cemetery, um, as Mary has pointed out. And in terms of attention between needing industrial land, there is 50 hectares currently in the process. And Mary, sorry, I cut you off there. What were you um, from Verna's comments you were oh, no, commenting? All, right. all I was really saying is that this kind of planning, there, there, it, there are a huge number of assumptions that we have to make and um, one could not reliably assume that the area of number 12 wouldn't be required in the next 100 years. But right now we're saying if things stay normal, whatever that normal is, this is how that space would be occupied. And I think um, the burden of finding additional cemetery land, should this be abbreviated or parts, more parts of it disposed of, I think uh, would be significant. In, in I, in, though in saying that, I haven't assumed what that might equate to from a funding or a timing point of view. Verna, did you have anything else you wanted to add yeah, there? Or? So that is, I, I appreciate that trying to protect the land to the future, and I appreciate that the board would have say over what happens, but I suppose you can flip that on its head as well. As long as the board owns the land, we have a say regardless, whether it's freehold or not. So what I'm saying is that there's a lot of change here. There's a, Marie, Marie, as you said, there's quite a lot of assumptions here, and to get it right is very difficult, especially considering that land on all sides of that block <coughs> can't be developed into industrial land. Um, and just sort of talking about assumptions, that the block to the south, I think there's an assumption that that's residential. It's not residential, it's a motorsport park. So I was at the motorsport park hearing when the cemetery was a fairly large consideration for that facility um, to try and find quiet time when people were getting buried. There's a whole protocol that had to be set up for communicating with that. Now, if the motorsport park expands, which as we know it is, because we've got a road naming application this afternoon for that as well, um, you know, there's potentially pretty significant effects. So I, I suppose all I'm saying is what I believe a recommendation that I could support would get to is lock in burial land we know now, leave the rest for the future, and knowing that it's under board control with all of this discussion around it and a cemetery management plan and potentially future LTPs and all the rest of it, there's plenty of time to look at what that use will be because it might well not be there. I understand that we're looking to plan here for 100 years or 200 years, whatever it is, but this might be quite a nasty spot to try and have some tranquil remembrance in 
in the future. We just don't know that. Um, you know, and I, I don't want to get into a cost thing because this isn't about cost, but ultimately when it's land, it is about cost. There's about $11 million worth of sales sitting there. <coughs> this report hasn't even considered what $11 million could buy at $5 or um, I think 375,000 per hectare is the latest cherry sales that have just gone through and that has trees on it. So, you know, you don't have to go that far to find land that would be much more enjoyable to be in and you'd still have change left over if this land was developed. That option isn't even in front of us. So I guess what I'm saying is there's a pile of options. We aren't seeing all of them and we can't guess all of them because it's very difficult. I'm trying to suggest something that might work in the interim, but also Gordy, and I do take your point that we need to be looking very far into the future because of, you know, succession, you know, families all like to be together. Um, I guess the solution that I could support would still allow for that because I'm not I'm not proposing that the board sell this land. I'm proposing that the board develop this land in accordance with this cemetery management plan in front of us, acknowledging that it will change through future long term plans. And that's sort of all for me. It gets too technical after that, Anna, so I'm happy to sort of sit there. OK. I do have Bob wanting to ask a question as well. Bob, floor's yours. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to ask um, if someone at some stage wanted to uh, develop a crematorium on, on this site, um, <coughs> and it were, I noticed that their crematorium area is down in stage five. Um, if, for example, they, this were to come up very soon, um, would they still be able to do that um, in view of the fact that they would be actually passing through an area that was yet to be developed? Um, that, that's really my question. So if a crematorium um, were to be developed there by a private concern, could that happen straight away is my question. So through the design process that developed the concept, that um, connectivity from the street to the crematoria site has been considered. What uh, the landscape architect has done in indicating stages is to reflect uh, burial demand rather than development demand. So reshaping the staging uh, can certainly be done. And to achieve that, we just need to go through the next phase of design and um, costing and what have you to, to make that work. So it's not, not undoable and certainly factored within the overall thinking. Um, Neil, your observation, and, or unless anybody else, Neil has kindly said if there's somebody else who would like to speak first, he will wait for his observation. No, Neil, over to you. Um, I really wanted to pick up on what Verna was saying and I, I get where he's coming from, but I guess um, I've been unfortunately far too closely associated with the cemetery for far too long um, and probably intend to be there much longer. Um, but we have as a board in our previous um, iterations um, swapped where the cemetery growth was going to go, which was going to go to the east, which is now industrial land. We've bought land, we've um, done land swaps, we've done all sorts of things, and now finally we're upgrading the, um, the plan for the future. One thing I know about this plan is it's wrong. There's no doubt this plan will be wrong. And whatever we do um, in 10 years, 15, whatever years it is, will be something different. Um, I'm not bothered by preparing for potential developments because that can happen at any stage we want to under the current, under the recommendation that we've got in front of us. So it doesn't happen to have to happen today. The only change you'd make is you'd probably change the resolution um, recommendation B to be less the land that's already been swapped um, just to provide some clarity. But um, the, the crematory may or may not happen. Um, the, the board may or may not sell the land for the crematory, crematorium. We'd probably just lease it, I would have thought. It would be a good option. We might even build it ourselves yet. We might make it into um, an income generator for the rate part. There's all those sort of options that are out there. Well, this recommendation we've got in front of us does, it says those options all still remain and we haven't second guessed anything apart from having a concept that says this is, might be where it's going to head. And on that basis, we'll make this decision today and then tomorrow we can make a whole lot more decisions um, as we see fit. So, you know, Bernard, I get your, your concerns, but I think actually we can park them. This will get us through and moving ahead. Um, and we've got plenty of time before any pressure comes to, to develop any more industrial land. Or have we? Don't know. But when we find out, um, we'll be in the best place to have the last bit that's left and um, the ratepayers will benefit by that. 
can I just throw in again? Anna? Yes, go for it. <laughs> Sorry, it goes to Bob's point. We're all essentially, and what's maybe a little bit annoying for everyone about this is we're all kind of talking about the same thing. I'm not proposing that we develop this block into anything other than what's in front of us right now, and lot 12 may well be burial plots. I've got no problem with that. What I guess the issue I've got, and, and it touches on what Bob was saying, is if the cemetery wanted to come in quick, the way to deal with that is the market. The market will deal with it quick. To do a resource consent and develop that concept that Boffa Miska has done might take three months. Then you chuck it into council and you can start your building plan straight away. You wait to go through this reserve management plan. We've got to wait till the reserve management plan's done. Then we're going to go, oh, it's not in the long-term plan. And we're in the same boat as we were for the Memorial Hall, which has taken years and years and years to get agreement because we're a long-term plan. But we couldn't even talk about the Memorial Hall until it was in the long-term plan again, between lo last long-term plan and this long-term plan. So I guess all I'm saying is, is the market provides flexibility and with board control, with input from Gordy's team, which is invaluable for a cemetery because we aren't experts in cemeteries, uh, what I'm suggesting is that it's six to one, half a dozen to the other. However, it allows flexibility to the market for a, 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 a because a, a crematory might come in and go, I want to be right at the top of area 12. Well, happy days, because that's a perfect buffer between the cemetery and the industrial zone that's already existing there. They'll pay for all the amenity planting to go around it. And then you've got a perfect garden area where that cemetery uh, crematorium shown now. So all of those options just get taken out of play. And this is my view if we jump down a reserve management plan over that whole site. I wouldn't have recommended this if we didn't have to do title uh, subdivisions anyway. As Neil said, uh, recommendation B has to change anyway. All I'm saying is this is six to one, half a dozen to the other. It allows us flexibility under the careful guidance of Google's team. That's all I'm saying. OK, um, I haven't heard from Nigel or Cheryl. Have you got anything you'd like to um, to contribute? I've got nothing. No, I'm I'm just listening. OK, so Bob, did you want to voice your um, question? Or your comment? Um, I was just simply I just simply made that uh, remark that whatever happens, I mean, I, I, I get what Werner was saying about, um, you know, noise considerations and the considerations of the fact that it's going to be in the in the middle of um, possibly an industrial area, um, but it's it's always going to be a cemetery. There's always going to be a cemetery there, whatever happens, because there are a number of people, you know, that, who have their relatives buried there and they will want to um, perhaps join them. And they'll obviously want to have a place where they can go and remember those um, uh, those relatives and, and family and friends. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Bob. So are we ready to go back to page 17 and look at the recommendations then? Because I've heard from more than one person that um, recommendation B needs to be um, updated or clarified or changed to reflect the areas that are already being um, considered or already um, noted as being for industrial development. So um, Neil, you had um, some wording there that you were thinking for B. Have you, can you find that back in your brain? Yeah, I was going to say something like recommendation would be would, would be start out with subject to any land currently uh, currently under contract for disposal. Specify the remainder of lot three. OK, classify the remainder of lot three. Yep, and just carry and on for how it's worded there. Yeah, OK. So can you repeat uh, that first bit again? So that Wayne to, can find it, yep. Subject to any land currently under yep. offer. Offer like or that? contract? Contract, thank yep. you. Classify lot the remain classify the remainder of lot three. Yep. And then just read as, as it is there. Okay. Um and, and we're just giving Wayne a moment to put that in place and he's going to share that um, on his screen so that we can see it and then we can discuss whether that meets um, people's what people are thinking, whether that's going to be something that we are at a stage where it can be can be moved 
So we've now got recommendation A, that we receive the report and accept the level of significance. B, subject to any land currently under contract for disposal, classify the remainder of lot three, um, reserve under the provisions of the Reserves Act 1977, subject to public consultation in accordance with the Reserves Act 1977, the consent of the Minister of Conservation and extend designation 200 subject to the process under the Resource Management Act to include the newly classified area above and D approves the proposed Cromwell Cemetery Development Plan 2021 and that funding be included in future long-term plans to provide implementation of the plan. Now I know Verna you were probably wanting that um, to be further amended to um, remove the designation from Area 12. Was that right? Well, I'd probably just amend. I mean, Neil's getting to the, the, the nub of it, is that that lot has to be changed in terms of the size that's currently there. Yeah. Um, I probably would have recommended that um, it gets changed to include only Area 3, 6 and 7 as shown on that plan. Um, anybody else got any thinking on that? Um, because we two ways. One, one of us will get a second. One of us, one, yeah. one of us will get a second. So if one of you would move it, and then we can, and then we can, and then we can um, find out if that's going to fly. Is that what you're talking about, Neil? Yeah. So, Verna, which way do you want to go? Do you want to have a crack at trying to get a second, or do you want me to have a crack and then try and uh, um, see if I get a second? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Neil who's up on the screen at the moment. He's moved that. Would yeah. there be a seconder for that motion? I'll second that. Okay. Is there, is there further discussion that we need to have before I put it to the vote? I guess it's sort of, I mean, the dice are cast from my perspective. This completely, in my view, takes out any opportunity for someone to come and freehold and quickly develop a crematorium, which we heard about extensively in the long term plan. Um, and this will categorically take new world what's happened to them. They still haven't bought that land. So categorically, this takes that out of play and we won't see a cemetery going in there, is my view. Why? Hang on, before, you know, I, I, I want to know why. I don't, I don't get that. Because freehold, Neil. Pardon me? It, it, because, because it makes freeholding so much more difficult for a private operator to come in there and freehold that and say, I want to move quickly. You're, you're tied up in council, the Department of Conservation, a whole pile of other things. I understand that those things. But Neil, you've been around as long as I have with, in terms of these planning matters. It's not easy to unwind things. Now I, it seems easy, but it never is in reality. And a commercial operator will move on and find a different site. As Louise said, there's 58 hectares more to come yet. So what's stopping them putting a, 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 a crematorium up on the Bannockburn roadside? Nothing. And because it stop them le leasing it as well in the meantime. Um, so yeah, but more... my, my option doesn't preclude them from leasing it. This one does, in my view. No, it doesn't. No, because the oh, thing sorry. about the plan, you can yeah. you can change the plan at any stage. It's not set in stone, so you can't change it. Yeah, yeah but I guess what I'm saying is leasing is the primary option for what we're looking at now. Freehold and moving quickly with the market is not. Well, yeah, this is my view. I can't see anything about a crematorium that's got to go that quick. That, that was what we were told at the long term plan hearing, which me and Tim picked on, on at the start of this meeting as well. Well, nothing's happened since then. Yeah, there's no land available. Now there's, there's even no, land. There's, no, 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 there's plenty of land available. Is it? OK, so yes. we've got a recommendation in front of us. We have a seconder for that recommendation. Is there any further discussion on the on the things that Werner is saying? Is there any? Are we, is, is the feeling that we would be tying ourselves into something that couldn't be undone? Or is the feeling, I, I do believe that um, the things that both Gordy and Louise and of course Mari have said to us is that, that, um, that I mean, obviously this all still remains um, under community board umbrella. And um, I know Neil, from your feeling that would be therefore not, um, outside of the realms of possibility of being developed by a private um, a private entity wanting to come in and develop a, um, a crematorium. Um, Louise has just made a comment that it could be leased in the interim and then freehold. The, the land is available right now. So um, that's what I was saying. Yeah. 
So I do have a mover and I do have a seconder. I am going to ask um, all in favour. Aye. Aye. Um, and any against? Yes, and record that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Okay, so that is um, carried. Thank you, Wayne, for um, getting that um, up for us to see. Righty ho, thank you everybody for um, some lively debate there. It was getting a wee bit lively at one moment or another. And of course, we move on to one of our favourite topics, which is item 21.1.3, which is a road naming approval for Highlands Park in Cromwell. And that is on page 112 of your um, agendas. And welcome, Faye. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so yes, we've received a request to name seven private roads in the second stage of the Highlands Park development. The developers provided two lists of names. Uh, the first list um, is to acknowledge the key staff and personalities who have played a role in the development of the park um, and also just paying homage to their Scottish um, heritage. The second list um, is after famous racetracks continuing on from stage one. Um, option one is the recommended option being the first list and the preferred list. Um, and the list of names is there, Quinsway, Harry's Place, Heather Lane, Splane, Grove, Wee Close, Leech Lane and Highlands Avenue. Um, any discussion or debate on that list of names that has been provided for us to consider? Hey, this might be your fastest ever. Do I have a mover and a seconder to um, for the recommendation on um, page 112 of your agenda, which is that the Cromwell Community Board receives the report and accepts the level of significance and B agrees to approve seven road names, Quinsway, Harry's Place, Heather Lane, Spillane Grove, Wee Close, Leach Lane and Highlands Avenue. I move. Thank you, Bob. Do I have a seconder? Is that you, Neil, or were you just thinking about it? <laughs> I was laughing and then, come on, you joke. <laughs> Thank you, Neil, for seconding that. Um, all in favour? Aye. Aye. Anyone they must have their buttons on or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. Well done, Faye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And that takes us to item... 21.1.4 on page 125 of your agenda. Welcome, Rebecca. And this item is about appointments to external bodies. Oh, thank you, Anna. Um, yes, you'll re recall late last year we had a um, bit of a workshop to discuss the appointments that the committee makes, that the community board makes to external organisations. And this report is trying to articulate um, the board's wishes and getting the delegations register tidied up in turn for the um, the elections later this year. So um, hopefully I've captured the thinking of the time and I'm open to any questions. OK, has anybody got any questions um, around no, Rebecca's report? Neil? Um, so have the Cromwell Resource Centre Trust officially changed their name to the Cromwell Community House Trust? That's what was said at the workshop. I think we checked and when can you? Don't believe so. They've got another that's name. definitely what they're known as. The, yeah, they're not, yeah, I think that's the key point. They're, they're known as the Cromwell Community House, but it's not the Cromwell Community House Trust. So the trust is still the Cromwell Community, um, Cromwell Resource Centre Trust, yeah. but they, they call themselves the Cromwell Community House, not trust, just Cromwell Community House. It's just a small point, but it's not a trust. Mm. I thought we'd clarified that. Yeah. Um, Cheryl, do you know as the rep on that committee? Um, they do refer to themselves as Cromwell Community House, um, and that's how they like to be um, referred to. But uh, the, to the best of my knowledge, it was the Cromwell Resource Centre Trust. That's what the that charity's is. website records. Yeah. OK, so they are the Cromwell okay. Resource Centre Trust who run the Cromwell Community House. Yep. Perhaps if we make B1 reflect 
that the Cromwell Resource Centre Trust is known as yeah. the yeah, Cromwell Community perfect. House Trust. Wayne, did you get that? No, no, no take out the word, take out the word trust. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's, it's just oh, yeah. Cromwell Community House. Yeah, Cromwell yeah. Community House. Wayne, did you capture yep. that? Yep, let me just uh, delete some stuff and then I'll read it. Um, so it's reflect that the Cromwell Resource Centre Trust is known as Cromwell Community House. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this item? Um, yes, and, and can I just ask, we're going on to um, adding the Cromwell and Districts Promotion Group, mm -hmm. but there's, there seems to be another group that's missing from here because um, I'm the liaison with the Pisa Moorings Community Group, and that doesn't appear on the list anywhere. It is. Um, it's on the page two, Bob. It's already there. Pisa Moorings. Pisa District Community Group. She's Pisa District Community Group. Okay, sorry, sorry. Pisa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Neil, for that contribution. Um, so it's already there. It's part of the list. So the B is just clarifying extra ones and changes. Is that, am That's I correct, correct there? Yeah, yes. so the, the, the rest of the list still exists. That's correct. Um, yeah, okay. There is another correction required to B3. B3, yeah. yeah, I'll make that same correction. Cool, thanks. Yeah. All right, any further discussion around this item? So with those changes, and let's remind ourselves what those changes were, um, B1 is now changed from um, reflect that the Cromwell Resource Centre Trust is known as the Cromwell Community House. And then that same change is made to B3. Is That's that correct. correct. Right, yes. thank you. Do I have a mover and a seconder? I'll move. Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Yep. Verna, yes. Thanks, Verna. So moved, Cheryl, seconded, Verna. All in favour? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you. Anyone against? Sorry, I need to ask that in this environment because I can't see. Cool. Thank you. Righty ho. So that takes us to item 21.1.5 on page 130 of your agenda, and that is the 2022 2023 annual plan, budget and fees and charges schedule. And we've got Leanne and Anne who are um, presenting for us. Cool. Good afternoon, everyone. So today we're here to present to you the Cromwell specific proposed annual plan for 22-23. And this is very much reflecting what was put in the long-term plan last year and adopted by council after your um, agreement to it on the 30th of June 2021. Gosh, the years are going quick. Um, I will take the paper as read. I'd just like to make a couple of comments. Typically, as we write these reports and keep working the, the numbers, as we keep doing all our modelling, the numbers change. So the first comment I want to um, acknowledge is that we have made some adjustments after presenting to another community board. And so at the moment, the collective rates for the entire district are sitting around 7.4 to 7.5, not 7.7. .7. The other thing I want to acknowledge, which is on paragraph two of page 130, is that the, um, the Cromwell collective rates over for next year are sitting more at 7.4. Growth is much higher than we initially anticipated, and that's a really important one to note. Outside of that, we have stuck to the long-term plan as, um, as the guidance by council. Um, we have a slight tweak to the Cromwell targeted rates of 12K, and this, which is above what we'd adopted in the long-term plan, and this is a reflection of depreciation and cost of and reduced interest income as a result of changes that have happened since we set the annual plan or the long-term plan year two back in January, February 2021, 
and allowing for what's happened this year as, as assets have been capitalised or costs have increased. The, the attachments um, below, one is very much the specifics on the targeted rates for the Cromwell Community Board, and we've also included fees and charges, which is the third recommendation we're seeking. Fees and charges are very minimal changes for the year. The long-term plan last year involved a lot of um, refreshing of fees and charges, and that was part of the consultation. And this year, they're very minimal. Um, waste management, which is page 135, changes every year as a result of the rates. And then there's been some new additions um, around the environmental services. And you'll see any changes in red as you go through. There's a few in planning and regulatory. There's been a slight change in wording in the alcohol licensing and just some minor changes <coughs> to parks and sports grounds. Other than that, really happy to take questions and um, yeah, supply any further information. OK, so um, questions, people. Any clarifications required? It's very unusual. OK. Our next steps, just so everyone's oh. across it, is Sorry. to take... Sorry, Neil. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, oh, I was going to say, Neil, I can't believe we're looking at a financial report and you don't have questions. I was talking away to myself. Um, <laughs> the, um, the, the, the budget on page 134, um, that's all the expenditure, isn't it? That is the rates collected. So this is the rates that we collect under those categories. Not expenditure, it's the actual rates. Yep. So the Cromwell General Revenue shows the contribution that, that that account makes to rates. Yes. Yep. And so this is net of all the income, like land sales, all that sort of stuff, but it's all separate because that doesn't fit, fit fit into the rate side of things. Correct. And neither does the cost of those sales, either they sit outside of the, the rates budget. Correct. So this is actual rates that go out under these different categories. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with further questions or clarifications, or can I get Leanne to tell us what her next steps were going to be? Over to you, Leanne. Cool, thank you. So next steps, we're going to take these. Um, once we've seen many a Toto on Thursday, we're taking all the four community board um, proposed budgets back to council. Um, the finance team, Anne and Kim in particular, will run the model again to make sure we've got all our growth numbers nice, we've got all our changes that have come through from different community boards inputted, and then we'll go back to council with our proposed rates increase, which is really good to see it is going to be lower than what was in the long term plan for year two, and check in with council in case there's something they need to add, remove, adjust etc. Thank you, um, Leanne. So that takes us back to page 130 on your agendas to the recommendations and there's A, B and C. A receives the report, accepts the level of significance. B agrees that the draft Cromwell Ward 2022-23 annual plan budgets mm. are recommended to Council for inclusion in the 2022-23 annual plan and C agrees to accept the Cromwell Ward 2022-23 fees and charges schedule and recommend to Council for inclusion in the 2022-23 annual plan. Do I have a mover and a seconder, please? I'll move, Nigel. Thanks, Nigel. And Cheryl, thank you. So moved, Nigel, um, seconded, Cheryl. All in favour? Aye. Anyone Aye. against? Carried, thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Leanne. OK, and that takes us to Mayor Tim to present his Mayor's report for us. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, Madam Chair, and a very belated Happy New Year to members that I haven't seen. It seems ages since, as you mentioned, Anna, it's been such a long time since yeah. we've been together. Um, in that period of time, I attended the Pest Free Pies and Moorings opening or celebration of success. It really was a great success. It was a 
a very good event celebrating a community group that tying in with some very helpful sponsors and corporates have achieved something um, really quite remarkable out of Pies and Moorings and they uh, should be and I'm sure will be congratulated and um, the benefits of uh, that in people's gardens for a long time will be there to be seen. Um, also took the opportunity that day to have a look around the um, the private water scheme that serves part of Pies and Moorings. Um, that was an, an interesting uh, exercise, uh, particularly with the three waters reforms coming along that, well, the three waters reforms doesn't affect them, but the Water Services Act does. Um, attended a tourism advisory board meeting at the uh, Lake Heritage, uh, the Heritage Lake Resort, and just comment on what an excellent facility that was. And that tourism advisory board um, tends to move around the district to have its meetings so that we can meet operators as we go. So um, it's a very good organisation too. Um, viewed an area of reserve that hadn't fared well during dry weather. I had a, a ratepayer ask me to come and have a look. Um, visited the Alpha Street pump station sites. Um, Nigel and Cheryl were there as well as Councillor um, Shirley Calvert and watched them being put in place. And it was, it's an interesting thing because you watch these massive tanks getting put in and you recognise that they are just so fundamental to making sure that we look after the, the river that was, or the lake that's right behind it. Um, they'll be buried by dirt. Uh, very soon if they're not already and we'll all forget that they're there but it's just some remarkable infrastructure under the ground. I um, attended the Cromwell Business Breakfast that was the first in a very long time as well and there was a presentation from Christchurch International Airport about where things are at with um, Central Otago International Airport and I'll be coming to Cromwell tonight to speak to the Cromwell Scouts which I'm really looking forward to. I think they have a dib dib badge for um, local government or something like that so it, I've gone and done this a few times and I always find it um, just you get some really, really good questions from these kids. It's really rewarding for me to be there. So I'm looking forward to that. And that, Madam Chair, is my lot in terms of Cromwell focused things. Um, very, very busy outside of that, obviously, with um, the Three Waters Working Group I'm on. Um, and um, yeah, but, but in terms of Cromwell stuff, that's um, what I've been up to. So any questions, happy to take them. Anyone have any questions for Tim? And if not, could I have somebody move and second his report, please? Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Verna, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you, Verna. And all in favour? No. Right. All right. <laughs> OK, and then it is on to my report. And um, it does seem like a very long time since I was last at a meeting because I was unwell for our November meeting, so I've dragged all the way back to um, October. I'm sorry for all of you listening. Um, so um, on the 20th of October, I had my um, interview that uh, is a regular slot for me with um, Shane from Radio Central to talk about um, what we've discussed in our community board meeting. On the 30th of October, um, I had the privilege of attending the Central Otago Vintage Car Club's Veterans Rally which is um, cars um, that from 1900 to, to about 1918. And um, what an amazing event and an amazing day. Um, and I um, spoke to welcome the um, participants who'd come from all around New Zealand and got to um, wave the flag as they all went off on their rally for the day. Um, absolutely fabulous event. Um, and it was staged at Alert Level 2. And so the club had done very well to get themselves organised to run that event under um, COVID protocols. On the 31st of October, I attended the Goldfields Duathlon um, as a volunteer. On the 24th of November, um, I was interviewed by Tim Brown from Radio New Zealand for the Checkpoint um, program, um, talking about the growth in Cromwell and the um, need for, um, for further housing to be available um, in our town. They were looking at the wooing tree development and asking the question, will, the, will this solve it all? Or um, is, there, is there more to do or um, and just talking generally about um, the issues with um, availability and affordability of housing in our town. On the, I'm going out of order now because um, on the 15th of November, um, I attended the architect's presentations for, um, um, as a member of the advisory group, um, to listen to the fabulous ideas people had for our hall. 
Um, on the 16th of November, I spoke to the residents at Golden View Lifestyle Village in their sort of annual, in, in their weekly or fortnightly residence meeting to give them an update on um, what we'd been um, doing for a while um, and to talk about um, the progress on the Memorial Hall. And of course, there were there are people who are residents who were um, very much um, a part of the building of the original hall. There was one um, lady who was very keen for me to promote the fact that the, the floor should be reused because it was such a wonderful surface for dancing. So um, I have passed that on. Um, on the 17th of November, I on the 15th of November, after the architect presentations, I also attended a museum trust meeting. Um, on the 17th of November, I um, attended a youth trust meeting. Um, they have um, the, where the Buttonton used to be. They've um, they're now leasing that office space as well as an office space, um, which gives them just a little bit more room to do the work that they do outside of the hangout where they um, welcome young people in, but to give them a space for their administration work and to meet one on one or to have um, out external um, therapists and things meet with um, with clients in that space. Um, so that's a really good addition to what they're doing. Um, on the 2nd of December, I attended a Kahui Ako management um, meeting, which is, of course, the community of learners in Cromwell and um, was part of farewelling um, very long term principal at um, Cromwell Primary, um, Wendy Brooks, who has um, stepped down from her position after a very long time. She didn't stay retired for very long. She's now working for the Ministry of Education in um, Dunedin supporting principals with their response to our current um, COVID um, protocols that we need to put in place. So she is she's there as a principal support person, which is great that she's still working in the education sector. On the 25th of January, I had the absolute privilege of attending the JASMAX um, workshops for our advisory group. Um, it was really professionally run. Um, we had a great day. Our input was very much listened to and um, and um, we had really good minutes that have been kept from the meeting as well, just to give us that record of, of where we got to. Um, they also met over that week with the stakeholders individually um, to start getting their perspectives on, on um, the um, new building. Um, and then since then, um, I have been very much focused on getting a school back up and running under very different protocols and expectations and um, and a very different world that we're currently living in. In the meantime, I've also been writing my fortnightly column in the Cromwell and Districts News. You may have noticed I missed my um, deadline a couple of weeks ago, but there is definitely a column in there this week. So that's my report that I'd like to move, please. And I will need a second. Sure. Thanks, Jill or Bob and both. Um, all in favour? Yeah. Aye. Super. So we move on to our members reports and in order of who I can see on my screen. Um, Bob, I'm going to start with you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a little bit quiet before Christmas and a number of events that I was intending to go to were cancelled, unfortunately, because of the uh, COVID situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, on the 28th of um, December, um, I attended the, uh, the Cherry Festival and the New Zealand Cherry Stone Spitting Championships, and I was an attendee and a competitor. Um, and just of interest, I actually managed to finish three metres behind Werner. Um, it was a very well organised event uh, by the Cromwell and Districts Promotion Group, a number of attendees. Um, I can't recall actually what the winning distance was, but it was considerably more than mine. Uh, on the 8th of January, I attended the South and on the 9th, in fact, I attended the South Island BMX Championships, which were held at the BMX track here in Cromwell. Again, it was a superbly organised event by the uh, Cromwell BMX Club on behalf of BMX New Zealand. 
Um, they had 370 competitors from all over New Zealand, and their ages ranged from four years old to 73 years old, which I think was amazing. Um, I also attended on the 24th of January um, a meeting of the Cromwell Golf Club Committee, and I mentioned that because in my report at the November meeting, I mentioned that they were intending to hold in conjunction with the Alexandra Club um, a Central Otago Seniors Championship in March. But in fact, because of the COVID um, situation, that's been uh, postponed, and they're now going to hold that in, in May. Uh, with a reduced number of fields, uh, sorry, a reduced number of competitors. I think uh, the intention is to have 192 spread over the two courses. Um, on the 7th of February, I attended a meeting of the Cromwell and Districts Promotions Group, um, and it was a planning meeting for the Light Up Winter event, primarily, uh, which is going to be held in July uh, this coming year. Um, Extensive measures have been put in place to ensure that the event uh, complies with the red traffic light restrictions. And they've got plans also to expand the event because of the success of the previous year's event with uh, over 4,000 attendees. Um, that's my report. Thank you, Bob. Um, let's move to Cheryl. Okie dokie. Um, I, on the 8th of December, I've got to put up here, I went, I attended the council meeting, um, covered off, oh, we had um, some representatives from both the um, Central Otago Heritage Trust and the Central Otago District Arts Trust, um, and they gave an overview of the work that they've been doing. Um, we watched a video of the Eden Hoare collection, which we'd seen before, but actually it's pretty impressive, um, and have agreed to establish the establishment of an Eden Hoare um, Central Otago Charitable Trust. Um, uh, uh, then we were given an update. Actually, this is quite good. We were given an update on the Maniototo bridges. Um, in their condition. Um, it was quite interesting to see the photos of the damage and the the um, defects of the bridges. So it's good to have a better understanding of what they're dealing with. Um, then we also, oh, there was also a report on solid waste um, and the level of service. And um, they sort of were looking at the possibility of extending that service to into Queensbury. Um, but the good news is that although we'll have more bins, it will cover off now, we'll have green waste, which will be taken away, which will be curbside green waste, which will be really good. Um, then on the 9th of December, I had I put in an apology for the historic precinct meeting. And on the 14th of December, I was an apology for the um, uh, workshop, the council workshop. Um, 26th of January was a council meeting. Um, there was, oh, we had a, a, a nice presentation from um, the Salvation, a representative from the Salvation Army, Central Otago Budgeting Services, and the combined um, Churches Food Bank, which was actually quite interesting. Um, with our current situation and COVID, um, the, it, it really just puts them under more and more pressure. Um, but they spoke about their relationship with each other is because they are actually intertwined and they do assist each other. Each group assists each other. Um, Wayne Dixon came and spoke to us from the Central Lakes Equestrian or regarding the Central Lakes Equestrian Club um, and its ongoing issues related to um, the license to occupy of the Cromwell Aerodrome uh, reserve area there. Um, there was uh, there was quite a comprehensive report on the Vincent Spatial Plan. Um, we had a report on the Alexandra Airport Master Plan and and there was um, 
we had um, there was a renewal of the Easter Sunday local shop trading policy, and there was um, three councillors appointed to the um, to hear submissions, and that was Tracy Patterson, um, Tamer Alley, and Ian Cooney. Um, what else? On the twenty seventh of January, that was when Tim um, mentioned that Nigel. Tim, myself, and Shirley Calvert went and had a look at the Alpha Street pump station. And like Tim, it was pretty impressive. There are uh, massive, massive big pipes. Um, I thought it was going to be tanks, but they're actually pipes. And I think they hold something like 66,000 litres of waste, something like that. Pretty impressive. So and they'll give it up to eight hours holding for the waste, which actually kind of future proofs the area and um, um, should anything go wrong they've got time then to get pumps in and fix it and generators etc so that's that's actually very beneficial um, then on the 31st of January I went to I went to a Cromwell community house meeting um, they have repainted the main area in the office um, they've put new carpet in this is all being funded by themselves um, it was sad to receive the letter of resignation from Dave Crossan, who is the treasurer. Um, he's been absolutely invaluable over the last wee while to get it up and running again, and will be sadly missed. Um, he's going to stay on until we find a replacement. Um, and they're looking to raise their profile because of COVID. Um, they don't tend to deal well, it's not known that they deal uh, as well. They, they sort of facilitate between the likes of the food bank and um, Salvation Army, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of people that may be in a situation that don't realise that they are out there and able to assist. So we're going to try and um, raise their profile so that there is um, so contact details and so that they, you know, offering their services. Then on the uh, 20 on the 2nd of February was the project governance meeting. Um, I attended on the 10th of February the historic precinct. Um, they are going to host the Eden Hall photo exhibition from the 11th to the 24th. So that will be at McNulty House, which is kind of cool. Um, and Helen Scholes, who is the chair, just gave us a report back from the advisory group. She had been to see Jasmax and the advisory group with, with relation to the um, Memorial Hall um, development. That's me. Thank you. And after some discussion down the side, it's Nigel next. Sorry, could you go to Neil next? I'm just doing something. I'll be right. Just need another minute. <laughs> okay. Neil next. Radio. Um, yeah, uh, just back in 26th of November um, was the annual Fire Brigade Honours uh, Night. Um, unfortunately, this year a closed shop um, with no external invites due to the COVID situation. Um, the only reason I really want to bring it up is that we um, I can farewell, or not farewell, but um, we acknowledge the contribution that Chief Fire Officer Steve Shaw have made to the Brigade as the Chief for the last 14 years or so. Um, and he was the inaugural um, recipient of the David Bolsh and Ewan Hilliard um, Award for Outstanding Contribution to the Cromwell Volunteer Fire Brigade. Um, you might have seen the article in last week's um, the news. Um, so um, yeah, it's just it was great to, to be part of that. So that was really cool. Um, as Worship already mentioned about the um, PS3 Pfizer moorings, I probably went there with, a, with two hats on, um, but he's right, they've done a pretty good job of making things happen up there. Um, Cromwell's about to get a new Sergeant of Police. Um, the current sergeant has um, been promoted and so there was a new sergeant to be starting uh, probably March sometime. I can't tell you who because I don't know if it's been made that public yet. Uh, 7th of December was a hearings panel meeting. Um, we looked at reclassifying um, part of the Ozana town belt for a water reservoir. Um, we had a retrospective resource consent for coal mining and rehabilitation works in the Harlowich um, coal pit at um, Coal Creek, Roxburgh. Um, we did a subdivision up in um, application for a subdivision in Fay Lane, which is in Queensbury, and also a three lot subdivision for Ardgar developments in Cemetery Road. 
tariffs. Um, the next day was a council meeting, um, which Cheryl's picked up on a lot of it, thankfully. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, we um, so that so the um the roundabout can proceed. The council um, approved the revocation of the um, vet corner um, reserve for road. Um, we um, declined the application from the Wooing Tree for the underpass contribution. Um, Cheryl mentioned the sideways contact and organics that's been picked up. Um, we adopted the 2021 annual report. Um, nothing significant in that apart from a, um, a very clean audit report. So um, great to see the work that the finance well, and the finance team did to get that all done. Um, endorsed the um, Proposal from the CEO for the um, COVID-19 protection framework, which has probably changed five times since then. Um, I'm not sure. So uh, Nigel pick up the tendering of the water services contract. Uh, and that stuff. Nigel do bridges, road stopping. No, nothing else. Well, really. oh, um, the policy review for dangerous and insanitary buildings was um, was a, a, um, reviewed, um, and. Um, that'll be out for public consultation, also along with the earthquake prone buildings one as well. Um, 11th of December, I uh, joined some of my fellow elected members for lunch down at, um, where did we go? Shadow Creek, I think it was. No, um, Orchard Garden, sorry, Garden. that's right. Yeah, that was a wrong year. Shadow Creek was the year before. Um, 12th of December was the uh, annual Cromwell Lions um, Senior Citizens Lunch. Um, great to still be one of the younger ones there. Um, but a good turnout, um, all things considered. Uh, 15th of December, we did another hearings panel meeting, and I haven't got my agenda with me, and I didn't write any notes from it, so I can't remember what we did. Anyway, um, the 14th of January, um, I went along through to Queenstown. Um, Queenstown have just reappointed their district licensing committee. Um, there's two of the Cromwell uh, Central Otago um, license committee members also on their panel, um, myself and Gordy Pay. So we went along to an uh, induction day for that. Uh, on the 25th of January, I had um, a bit of a sad day. I um, attended the funeral of 102-year-old um, uh, Tom Landreth, um, who um, unfortunately, having had lunch with him on the, at the Lions lunch, um, was the victim of the strong winds that happened not long after that and um, was injured and unfortunately um, didn't come back out of hospital. So that was a, a great loss to this community of a man that um, has done a lot um, behind the scenes and because if we all strive to live like he did, we'll be doing just fine. Thank you very much. Uh, that's about all I've got, I think. Thank you, um, Neil. Uh, do we have Nigel or, do we, or, ne or Vernon next? Nigel. Thanks, Anna. Um, first, just to cover off a couple of um, contacts from ratepayers over Christmas. One from a Queensbury ratepayer who is con concerned about the lack of uh, maintenance on stormwater cul and culverts, um, which I referred to the roading team, and I think is, the situation has been resolved. But it was advised by infrastructure, the roading team, that there's very little budget from transport agency for this kind of work. Um, and also, I received a complaint about the attitude of wasn't clear who, so just a general of staff at the transfer station. So that that was noted. I haven't passed it on to anyone. It, 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 he didn't want it. He was just the person that rang me. Was just wanted to get something, get it off his chest. I think. Um, attended an audit and risk meeting on the third of December. Uh, meeting of the council on the twenty sixth of January has mostly been covered off. Um, it isn't the item. On the Alexandra Airport master plan was interesting. They've got a very comprehensive plan, and they've got 25 hangars with apartments attached there now. A waiting list of 30, and plans to build another 25. And it's partly interesting just to compare the growth of Cromwell of hangars at Cromwell, but clearly Alexandra is the dominant uh, aerodrome for the district. Um, and that Cromwell, the clearly Cromwell is getting growth as well. It was noted that the request from Wooing Tree to, for relief on uh, roading reserves contribution 
was turned down. Uh, and also at that workshop, we had a, a museum uh, at that council meeting, we had a museum workshop, which was quite illuminating and, and I think raised a lot of issues that have, uh, I, I believe will be articulated and probably um, consultations with the community boards will, will follow. It was, quite, it was a useful workshop. Uh, had a meeting of the Water Projects Governance Group. Um, Clyde Waste there now joining the laterals to individual properties, which is proving challenging. Uh, all sorts of issues to be resolved around getting through fence lines and over road, over pavings and so on. So it's a very complex and difficult exercise uh, retrofitting the waste reticulation system. Uh, also in, in Clyde, Alex, the new uh, filtration building for the drinking water plant is uh, now underway with the excavations. Um, that governance meeting, there's talk about the Cromwell waste plant and the problems that the septic waste um, deposit point next to the waste plant is giving so commercial operators and um, caravans and so on can dump their their um, septic waste at this at this point and the problem is you're getting big accumulations of waste that then go into the waste ponds for the main plant and uh, give it and they're, they're struggling the ponds are struggling to accept such big dumps of waste all at once. So that's an ongoing problem that's going to have to be looked at. And as has been referred to, the building some resilience into the Alpha, into the, uh, Alpha Street uh, pump station was an interesting exercise and how you spent a few hundred thousand dollars on a couple, two or three big tanks. Um, Attended with that, and has already noted the first workshop with Jazz Max on the Memorial Hall, and I would agree with her comments that uh, it was uh, a well-run meeting and invigorating, lots of ideas being expressed, and the um, nitty-gritty starting to hit the road on that project. So that so that was interesting, and I think that's what I had. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Um, we're just going to double back to Neil, who forgot to turn the page on his notebook to complete his report. My apologies. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 2nd of February, um, Nigel, I've alluded to it, was a project governance group, and he's um, caught up with what's happening in that. A lot of lot of work happening, um, and none of these projects, as you said, are, are, are straightforward, no matter what you think and how well organised you are. The 8th of February, another hearings panel meeting. Um, a 17 lot subdivision um, on 185 Jolly Road Terrace. Um, a bit of a novel way of doing a subdivision in the rural area where the lot sizes were quite small, but the um, the main lot um, to be owned in common ownership of the other 16 lot owners made sure that they pretty well comply, complied with the, the minimum um, lot size. Um, so yeah, a bit like um, those that know um, Ben the Mere over towards Lake Hayes and um, also um, 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 uh, Helene at Wanaka, um, a similar sort of concept to that, um, and able to be protected. So that was um, considered. Uh, we did a two lot subdivision in Swan Road um, for um, yeah, and a building platform for the second lot. And there was also another two lot subdivision in the Wanaka Road, um, number 999, like at Cromwell Road, for again a two lot subdivision in a building platform. Um, and 11th of February was the uh, local Advisory Committee for Otago for Fire and Emergency New Zealand, which I'm on um, in my capacity as a, as a um, not my fire brigade hat, but my community capacity. Um, and yeah, nothing significant out of that of, of, of great interest, I think, at this stage. Yeah, that's the, 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 the balance of my report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. And Verna, lucky last. Uh, a lot of things were sort of 
cancelled um, due to COVID matters. Um, the Museum Trust meeting last night, Anna, I don't know if you were <laughs> notified. I turned up to a very quiet museum. They sort of cancelled at the last minute due to the um, current restrictions. Um, the Cromwell and District um, Community Trust their meetings tonight, so that's them getting together for the first time this year. Um, Connect under the Connect Cromwell sort of banner um, on the 5th of December, I attended the Christmas in the Park celebrations that they had, uh, which was really well attended. Highlands was there to um, make sure that there was a nice race car present as well. Um, good music, pretty good atmosphere. Um, then there's a few little initiatives that Connect Cromwell are looking to do uh, just because you know lockdowns kind of have a bit of an effect on people. Uh, there's a neighbourhood day they're looking to at least get some little care packages out to various people. Um, Operation Harvest, which was sort of, you know, Connect Cromwell helping to look after the seasonal workers. That's cancelled 100 people, so there's quite a few cancellations, unfortunately. Uh, some good news though, the disc golf, it seems to me that the disc golf facility that we approved a little while ago, Connect Cromwell are looking to have that in, all the installation started next week. So there might be some changes coming shortly. Um, Yes, I was also at the um, Cromwell District Promotion Group Cherry Spitting uh, or Cherry Day. Um, trying to spit some cherries, but yeah, I, well, I wasn't very good. Um, although I did, as Bob noted, think Bob. <laughs> um, um, and then on the for Lake Dunstan Charitable Trust, uh, they are looking to start some community consultation pretty soon on the lake plan that they've been developing in conjunction with uh, Lynn's um, and shaping our future out of Queenstown, um, which is sort of an organisation that specialises in community engagement, is looking to start that engagement fairly shortly. Um, if they, and I think they've already started collecting sort of information from various people in different communities from Clyde to Terrace. Uh, and that's me. Thank you very much, Verna, and all the other elected members for updating the community on what you've been up to in the, in the time between meetings. Um, and it has Feels like it's been a very long time with the Christmas break in the middle there. Do I have a mover and a seconder for those reports, please? I move. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, yes. no, uh, thanks Cheryl. Um, all in favour? No. Carried. Righty ho. And that takes yeah, us. Yeah, just, just before you move on, am I right in thinking that Neil might be hiding as if not light as fire under a bushel, then that he's actually received a promotion. An accolade, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so maybe we should be congratulating um, Neil, who sort of alluded to the fact that long-standing fire chief um, had stepped down from the position, but failed to mention that he is now taken on board that role. So congratulations, Neil, um, and we. What a great um, accolade for you, and it means that we know that the fire brigade's in very good hands um, moving forward for the future. So congratulations. So thank you, Nigel, for reminding us that we did need to acknowledge that accolade. Yeah, yeah thanks, Nigel. It wasn't about me, it was about Steve. <laughs> I know, but still. It's important to recognise that we have um, people who do amazing things in our community um, as part of our community board, so thank you. Righty ho, so that takes us to um, item 21.1.9, which is on page 155 and um, is the governance report um, and our status reports. Are there any items that people wish to discuss? Uh, Big Fruit Reserve, page 163. I'm sure I heard on the wireless or read somewhere that there's no contractors, but the status report says that um, we're heading towards March. Has something happened that I missed, we've missed? There has been a contractor who has been in quite close contact over the last um, few months who was very keen to know when the, um, when the tender documents were going to be ready. So my assumption would be that the tender documents were ready and they've, they've, um, and that's, uh, so Gordon is going to comment because instead of waffling on about it, he'll give you some actual information. Gordon. Yes, thanks. So the tender has gone out on the GETS website. So that's uh, an open tender. Went out last week and I've got a couple of weeks or so to respond to that, whoever wants to. And I'd also advise those people who 
had a particular interest that they need to look on that website and follow the instructions to put in at the end. And and obviously it is an open an open um, tender. Uh, my comment was merely that the notion that there was nobody available in the whole country who could do the work was probably not true because there have been people um, showing interest in when the tender was going to be released on the GETS website. So I'm, I'm pleased to hear that, Madam Chair, because it means that tomorrow morning on the wireless, when you're talking to Shane on Radio Central, you can correct what he asserted to me on Monday where there was no one available to do it. And he thought the idea was that we should get some artists and put that to them to do to do their own take on it every year. They could paint it themselves. <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure what planet he was on when he was saying that, but I'm sure tomorrow you can correct them. Because I, I will I will make sure that Shane has correct information about the process and that there will, in fact, be people um, vying for the tender to do the work for us. Thanks. Any other comments on the governance report? Yes, please, Madam Chair. The um, yep. uh, item about the fireworks event, which is being or was being held by the Cromwell and Districts Promotion Group, um, it actually says that the event's been deferred until March, uh, may not proceed. And in fact, at a meeting uh, last week, they decided that it would not proceed at all. So, OK, uh, correct thank that. you, Bob. Thank you for that updated information. OK, anything further? All right, so that takes us back to page. Um... No, no, no. Sorry, Madam Chair. Oh, I knew, I knew oh, I one more. Um, on yep. page, do, 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 page 171, yep. on page 172, uh, Central Lakes Equestrian Club, it notes in the status report that the club were to attend the January. Oh, sorry, council meeting. That's right. Makes sense. It's all right. Problem solved. Yes. You're right. Yep. Council meeting, and they did attend that council meeting from someone's um, members' report. Yeah, they did. Yeah, quite right. Yep. I work out why they're coming to us as well. And I was a bit confused, but I, I did it myself. Sorry. No, that's cool. There's a lot of bits of paper to read. Okay, so that takes us uh, back to our recommendation that the reports be received. Um, do I have a mover and a seconder? Move, yep. Nigel. Neil. Thank you. And seconded, Neil. Um, all in favour? Thank you, carried. Um, our next um, item, sorry, I'm losing my place of which, but whether I'm looking at a screen or a piece of paper in front of me next. Um, next is the date of the next meeting and the date of our next scheduled meeting is on the 29th of March, um, 2022. Um, and then we have our resolution to um, exclude the public. So the resolution, the recommendation is that the public be excluded from the following parts of the meeting. Um, the general subject matter of each matter to be considered while the public is excluded is listed in the agenda. Um, so do I have a mover and a seconder for us to move into um, publicly excluded meeting? Thanks, Nigel. Thanks, Nigel. Thanks, Neil. All in favour? Thank you. And and thank you. Yeah. Thank you to um, anybody um, attending our meeting um, today um, from the public. Um, we are going to move into publicly excluded now, so we'll just give Rebecca a moment to turn off the live part of the meeting so that we can proceed with the next parts of our meeting um, with no public 